welcome to the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria. It's a very blustery day outside today. Early spring, kind of like winter. So this is a great day for us to be inside here, to, to go through the gallery, and I'm going to take you on your own private tour. And while we're doing that, I'm going to show you some ways to see art in a way that is different than just looking with your eyes lots of new ways to experience art so that it's even more enjoyable when you come to visit. Before we get started though, I want to acknowledge that the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria is on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking people, known today as the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. We are so honored to be able to work and play, make art, create on these traditional territories. All right, everybody, come on, let's go visit. Before we go inside the gallery, I'm going to show you something I like to do. It's a bit of a warm up for when I am about to see all kinds of art. It's kind of silly, it's really fun. Now, when I'm moving in a space like the gallery, I want to be sure that I'm moving so that I don't disturb anyone around me, and certainly so I don't bump any art. But I'm going to do a little dance for you right now, and it's the, I'm going to see some art dance. So if you were walking around and just getting ready to go inside the gallery, you could just maybe walk a little bit more interestingly, get yourself loosened up, think about what you're going to see, and you can think, I'm going to see some paintings, yes I am. Or maybe I'm going to see some sculpture. Yep, going to see some sculpture. Or maybe I'm going to see some photography see all kinds of interesting things in the space. So it does maybe move our bodies a little bit, anticipate what's going to come next, and then we can head over into the gallery. We are now in our blue and white exhibit, which features all kinds of ceramics, blue and white of course, from many parts of the world like Europe, Asia, and a lot of it is very, very old, hundreds and hundreds of years old, like the pieces I'm about to show you right now. Here we have three of the pieces I love best from this collection. There is looks like a little book and then there is an enormous gorgeous what looks like a bowl and then over here we have a wonderful little woman who looks like she's crouched down. We could of course look at this and find a huge amount of interest in these pieces. I want to show you how we can also look at these and experience taste, touch, sound and smell. And let me show you what I mean. This little book, of course it's made of ceramic, so it's not really a book, right? And if I look in the top of the book, I see that there's actually a little hole in it, which makes me think, why would there be a hole in a ceramic book? Well, I think it's probably because people would have poured hot water into this. We have to remember that this is very old. It says it's a Delftware book-shaped piece of art. It's Dutch. It's late 17th century. Whenever you want to know a little bit more about something like this, you can always read the little tag. It's very, very helpful. So, okay, it's old. You put hot water into it. Maybe there's a cork that might have gone into the top. And then I'll bet if you hung on to it on a chilly day, it would keep your hands warm. So you could imagine maybe you'd be in a cold church or maybe you'd be on a sleigh somewhere in the wintertime and your hands would be all clasped around this and it would be so warm and toasty so you can feel the warmth. So that's using your sense of touch. Now I'm just going to move around here and we have this gorgeous little woman and she looks like she's crouched like this. Now it says she is also quite old, mid 18th century. She's Dutch. 
So this was made a long time ago too. And we may think of smell and think, well, geez, how do you smell art, right? Well, you, I guess you could go up and smell it, but that's probably not gonna be very interesting. But when we look at this and we see her crouch down, she's actually crouched over something called a chamber pot. Now, I don't know if many of you know what a chamber pot is, but back before there was indoor plumbing, people, if they needed to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, they had a little pot under their bed that they could pull out. So you could imagine by the morning, hmm, it probably wouldn't smell so good, would it? So that is a way that we can imagine smell when we look at this little piece of art. It's kind of funny, I love her. Now, if we move on to this gorgeous, big, beautiful bowl, it's got a, like a centerpiece on it. So it's, it's very proud looking. It stands on this little center stand and it's called a compote. Some people say compote. It was designed to hold beautiful things like fresh fruit, nuts, uh, maybe some fancy sweets or something I really, really enjoy, which is this very rich, delicious combination of stewed fruits with honey and cinnamon. Really, really tasty. And this would have stood very prominently, perhaps in the middle of a, a dining table, perhaps when there's a, a dinner party happening. So if I think of taste and I think of sound, I can think of looking at this bowl filled with something delicious and how wonderful it would taste. And then for sound, maybe I can envision a whole dinner party gathered around a huge table with this in the middle of the table and everyone is talking and maybe their, their knives and forks are clinking as they're eating, maybe their wine glasses. So we can imagine this whole wonderful thing happening as we look at this bowl. So now we have used all of our senses just in this one little area to enhance how we see the art. And I think that that is a really neat thing to do. I also think that it's time that we could look at yet another way that we could look at art. So I'm going to walk over to the next gallery and I'll meet you there. Thank you. 
is a pencil drawing, and it's by an Inuit artist named Nudapar. And we see here extremely dynamic setting. There's so much going on here. And this figure in particular, wow, what an interesting pose. We could try holding this pose. And you can see, wow, I wonder what's going on here. Look at it. It's experiencing what's happening. And it makes the whole thing become that much more exciting. Moving our bodies is another way that we can really get inside the work that we're looking at. And speaking of moving our bodies, I'm going to move our body to our next room and we'll look at some more art. And here we are in this room full of art from our Canadian Historical Collection. I just, I just think they're 
adorable. I just want to reach in there and touch them, which of course I won't do. But I want us to think about how we could look at this arm as if we were someone or something else completely different than who we are. Uh, for example, if I look at these teapots as who I am, I know that they're something into which we put water, we steep tea, and we pour out the tea. But if I were a Neanderthal, for example, and I came over to this, and I looked at this, I could think, hmm, I wonder, can I eat it? Can I eat these things? What are these funny shapes? Hmm, and, and what's this stuff? Is this ice? I've never seen anything like this. Of course, we know it's glass, but probably someone from many, many, many thousands of years ago wouldn't have a clue, right? So it's like we're seeing it through someone else's eyes. Or maybe you could think about what if you were a handful of loose tea leaves and you were thinking, oh my goodness, which teapot should I choose to be brewed inside? I can't make up my mind. They're all so beautiful. Or perhaps think that you're the child of one of the people who made one of these teapots, or perhaps who owned one of these teapots. So it's, oh, it's more than 100 years ago, and let's say you're only two years old, and you're looking at these, and you're just longing to touch them. You know you're not allowed to, but you think, I want to touch them, and I want to play with them, because they're so beautiful and small and perfect. So when you do this, you, it's like you're putting a different brain into your head almost, and you're seeing this through another lens. And that's another way to examine art that makes it feel different. It's like it gives us another angle to examine the, the art with. So that is the last thing I want to show you today about how to look at art. Uh, this though made me feel like I want to make art though. And I think you might feel the same way. So I'm going to invite you now to come with me to our studio and I'm going to show you how to make something very special, which I'll tell you about. Okay, now what we're going to be making today is our own mini gallery. So when we're doing this, we can consider it, we can make it any way we want. This is our space. This is our gallery. It doesn't look like any other gallery we've ever seen because it's our own design. Now we are gonna need a few things to start. So I would suggest that you have a box. Now mine is an old shoe box. You could also use perhaps, this is one that held my bike supplies. You could even use a really big box if you want. You can go as large as you wish. Um, you will also need any kind of coloring materials that you have. You could have paint or pencil crayon or marker, anything you've got, doesn't matter. Um, a pair of scissors is handy. I love my old scissors. Uh, you could have a glue stick is a really good idea. Tape is nice if you've got it. Um, an assortment of, I don't know if you've got old magazines maybe, or um, even newspaper. They're just kind of fun. We could work with that as well. Some plain white paper. Uh, and then you're pretty much set, I think. Now, I guess we will start by looking at our box, which is of course just, at this point, just a plain box, right? You, you might have a lid too. I've got a little lid to my box that I've got over here. When we're beginning to make our gallery, we should perhaps start by thinking of the outside. Our outside is what's going to bring people into our gallery, so maybe we'll make it so it's not just plain. Let's think of something exciting. Like, for example, on my gallery, you see I put some trees and there are these really interesting swirly trees that are all over my space. Because I think if I was walking down the street and I saw a building that was painted like that, I think, whoa, I really, really want to go inside here. So there is the beginning of our gallery, is our outside. So again, you could use some paint like I did, or maybe you've got some pencil crayon or something that will make marks on whatever color your box is. 
Then we can think about how we want to make inside our gallery evolve. So, hmm, just this big blank space. We can do so many things. Well, I first started out by thinking, when you walk into a gallery, usually there's tile or there's carpet on the floor. But for my gallery, I'm going to put grass. So I've got some paint here. Oops, sorry, lady pens. I've got some green paint here. And I'm just going to paint, hope you can see here, the bottom of my gallery, my floor, with green paint because, you know what, that's going to be grass. Grass so that when you walk in our gallery, it feels great under your feet. I think that that would be way more enjoyable than maybe just having carpet or linoleum or whatever. Might be a bit harder to clean, huh? But it would be so delicious feeling on my feet. And I think at my gallery too, we're gonna have bare feet. Bare feet, so we can just walk around on our bare feet and really relax and enjoy. So, do, 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 do. so there we've got our green grass for our bottom. And again, you could do anything you want. You could make a checkerboard pattern if you wanted. Whatever appeals to you. Okay, bottom of our gallery, where we're going to walk. So now you could think, hmm, what am I going to do with uh, the walls of my gallery? Now, of course, usually galleries have white walls. And there's a good reason. It's so that when you're showing all the different art, there's not something that's competing against whatever else is um, in front of it, because otherwise it's kind of hard to look at the art. But since this is art gallery, well, maybe the walls are the art too. So we could try, again, maybe using some marker or pencil crayon or paint to make a, a color that you really like. Maybe a shocking red, or maybe you want to go black. Or, this is just a suggestion, if you've got old magazines or, uh, I don't know, maybe some... Uh, well, cardstock or something that's in an interesting color, or maybe you've got some wrapping paper, you could put that in behind for what's going to be your background. Now this happens to be some music that I found from an old music book. So I think I'm just going to take my glue stick and I am going to the glue stick all over here like this and this is going to become the back wall of my gallery. Let's hope this sticks in here. So let's just put this in here like this. Kind of nuzzle it in. That looks pretty good. Let's see if this is going to stick. I'm just going to push it down like this a little bit. Okay, so now we have this interesting backdrop too. So we've got our little backdrop in there. What else might, might we need to have? Well, maybe we should actually put some art in our art gallery. That's a really good idea. So this is where you can really, really get super creative too. I make my own little pieces of art, whatever my art's going to be, and I just use regular paper. You can use, I've got a heavier paper, which is called watercolor paper. I happen to have it lying around. You could use just copy paper, um, whatever you like. It can be colored paper. So all you have to do is decide, hmm, what's it going to be? Is it going to be? Is it going to be square, rectangular, whatever shape I choose, maybe it's going to be triangular. So you could cut a triangle like this, okay, and then we draw 
our art or we can paint our art or we can cut little pieces out of magazines and glue them onto here so maybe you've got some pictures of your family so it can be like your family is the gallery so I'm just going to draw here I'm just going to draw I don't know a quick fun little frame here let's do it on this side instead quick little frame like this because it's kind of nice to have a frame for our paintings so I've drawn this little frame like this and then you can just put whatever art you want inside I'll show you some pictures that I've finished for example ah uh, looks like we've got some bird art happening here and in this little piece I've got some a little abstract art and then we can take them and we can hang them wherever we want in our space and we can use white glue if you're going to leave it in there permanently I suggest using white glue because it really really sticks well if you just want to have it in there for a little while then you can just put some glue stick on over time it's very easy to pull it off again to add something else because this is the other thing we can change the art in our art gallery anytime we want so you can think about how you want to put it inside here I'm going to try to just use glue stick on here and see if it will stick it may not so we'll just see here I'm just going to put it here I'm going to put tons of glue stick a trick with glue stick if you want it to really stick well to put it on both surfaces, not just on one. Put it on the place it's going to stick to, as well as the thing that you're going to be sticking. It really helps. So let me see if I can get our birds in here. Oops, let's put them right side up, and then I'll show you what it looks like here. Uh, it might stick, we'll see. If it falls down, it falls down. So there you can see how you start to have your art taking shape in your gallery here, which is so neat. So, of course, we would have art on the walls. I think that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Are you staying? We can also think about things we could put in for our sculptures. So, for example, this is just something I have lying around my house. It's this funky little chicken here. Funky chicken. We could also use something like my Wonder Woman Pez, and she could also be in here. Now, because my floor is still a little bit wet, maybe I'll just put this in here like this. So I can put this in here for now. Da -da -da. Here's my chicken. And then I could put my Pez in if I want. I could put all kinds of things in here. You could also think of... This is just something that I made out of little bits of paper. It's just little curled bits of construction paper. And we could think of maybe having it hanging from the ceiling if we want. We could just stick it to the ceiling with some tape. I might even just do that. Or you could even just put it, mm, let's see, what could we do? Maybe we'll put it like here for now. So now we've got, how's this looking? Oh, it's looking pretty good so far. So we have stuff inside of our gallery. And again, please get super, super creative with this. There's probably tons of things you can think about that I haven't even considered. Um, what else? Well, what is a gallery without people in it, right? So what we could do is we can take a piece of paper Thick paper is helpful for what I'm going to show you. So if you don't have thick paper like what I've got here, you can take a couple of pieces of thin paper, just like copy paper, whatever you like. Take your glue stick. And we can glue and we can stick them together with another piece so that it gives us a piece of paper that's quite a bit thicker and stronger. So think of that if you don't have thicker paper with you for what I'm going to show you. So let me just move this to one side here. So when we're making our little people, you can see that I made this 
little character here. I gave them a red beret so that they look very, very artistic. So I've drawn my little person on here, looking like he's like, whoa, look at this gallery. There's grass on the floor and there's a giant chicken. This is pretty cool. Now we want this person to stand up. So in order to do that, you can see I've left a little bit of white at the bottom here. So what we can do when we finish drawing is we fold back like this, this little piece of white. So it's like now there's this little tag in the back. And that means that when he's in the gallery, he can be standing up like this. And then we can just take tape or glue stick and we can put him, maybe we'll try putting him in here. here. Glue, I think tape might actually be best here but since I've got this glue stick handy I'm going to use this. Excuse me chicken. And we can put them just like that. Da, da, da. So here's our person walking around, looking at all this cool art. Now if you want, you can add, I think we should have security guards walking around with huge bowls of candy. So they can just be giving out candy and I think free art supplies. So candy and free art supplies is what our security guards are going to give out. So you could consider making security guards for this wonderful little gallery that you're constructing. Now, a lot of you may have a lid that comes with your box. So if you have a lid, this gives you even more scope for creativity. So the one thing that probably is the most important if you're making a gallery is you've got to have a door. People can't come into the gallery unless you've got a way for them to get in, right? So if you only got the one box, there's no problem. What you can do is you can Maybe get your parents. If you're very young, you might find this a little challenging because it's a thick piece of cardboard. Decide where you might, maybe you want to have a door here. Maybe you want to have a door here. Maybe you want to have a hole in the top where people can ooh, come down into the gallery. Anything you want. And you could get whomever is helping you um, to draw. You can draw where you want the door. For example, maybe I'll draw, I'm going to draw a hole on the top, just because that's kind of fun. So you can see I, check this gently, I've got a, a little drawing in the top there. And then you can get whoever's helping you to take uh, a sharp blade and just cut out the hole. If you want to make a door on the side, you can just get your person to cut a little door wherever you want that will open. And let me show you what you mean. I mean, in my lid, which was with my box, it had already had a bit of a logo on it that had a circle. So I cut my door so it's like this. And then what happens is this just comes in front. So at the end of the day, or at the beginning of the day, my gallery is like this, and I painted it shocking red because, once again, it's so much more interesting than just boring old brick or wood or what have you. And then you can open it and you can look inside and see what's happening in my gallery. So you can see that this gives you so much opportunity to create, and you don't need to have anything fancy or unusual to make your own little mini gallery. And you can just, just play around, have fun. It's your space, and I want you to have fun making this. I am so glad that you've come to visit us here at the HEGV today to make art, to visit the gallery, and to learn just new ways of seeing the art in the gallery. I really, really hope you come to visit us soon. But in the meantime, happy day and happy art making.